Hi there, I'm Charlotte. I am a rubber duck collector, a Guinness World Record holder, and also a professor at the University of Washington. Uh, in order to be an expert, you have to learn how to be an expert. And I actually learned it has to be an expert through collecting rubber ducks. Um, and that's something that very few people know about me, was that you know, I learned to be an expert in these much less rarefied circles of <laughs> collecting ducks. See, 10 years ago, I was a PhD student at UCLA. And you know, I was learning a lot from my professors. The studies were going pretty well. But at the same time, um, I didn't feel like I was an expert. I felt like I was miles, if not light years, away from being an expert. Um, and at the same time, I was collecting rubber duckies. I was really amassing a whole bunch of them. And they were my antidote to taking life too seriously or getting consumed by intellectualism. And I just thought they were fun and cheerful and cute, you know, and they're easy to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gathering more and more ducks and really starting to compare and contrast them. I got more involved. I started a website. Um, I started meeting other people. And I really started to study the ducks and see some differences. And I created a typology about different classifications of rubber ducks. And you know, collectors that I didn't know would use these terms. And they started to be published in books and magazines. Um, I was really amazed. And then in 2003, something amazing happened. I, I got the Guinness World Record for world's largest rubber duck collection. And by now, I was one of two leading experts in the whole world uh, on rubber ducks. <laughs> so of course, I was thrilled about this. But part of me was also frustrated. Because, and I, I told my husband, you know, I'm more successful as a crazy duck lady than I am as a scholar. You know, what's going on? <laughs> And he said, well, you know, if you did the same things you did for your collecting, maybe you would have the same result in your work. <laughs> so I thought, you know, you, the truth from the spouse, right? <laughs> so I thought, what, ha what have I been doing? What are the steps that I've been taking in order to become an accidental expert? And, and so this is what I, I learned as I traced the steps of all of the different things I did. One of the things is that when you're starting to do something and you want to master it, you really have to concentrate your effort and stay focused. When you're doing the things a collector does, it's so easy to get sidetracked um, and go off and do other really interesting things. So you really have to stay focused and you really have to specialize. <laughs> you know, you'll see that cute beanie bear and you'll see that cute purple beaver and you have to say no. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to focus your efforts. At the same time, you've got to focus your passion on that one thing. You need to explore broadly, okay? It wasn't enough to just collect and have the ducks. I wanted to know everything there was to know about ducks. You know, where they came from, how they were made, who made them, and on and on. So, you know, I was exploring broadly, but I was also thinking deeply at the same time. It took me down some really interesting paths where I was starting to um, learn about the history of the rubber industry in the United States, injection molding. I was watching old Sesame Street videos <laughs> to learn about Ernie's first rubber ducks. And you know, there were times where I thought, you know, I'm done with this. I, I'm going to quit the ducks. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> and I took breaks of sometimes days, weeks, sometimes even several months. But And this is the important part. I always came back to it. See, a lot of it was just putting in the time and working at it consistently. Because you'll find that if you maintain that curiosity, over time you'll amass an amazing depth and breadth of knowledge that's going to carry you far. So this is really important. You know, It's hard to have an ego about rubber ducks, because they're just rubber ducks. So I really learned to get into this habit of saying, you know, I don't know, I don't understand, tell me more. And if you be really assertive about this, you're ignorant without shame, you'll become, you know, you'll learn a lot. And another efficient way to learn a lot is to build a community around you. It sounds cliche, but it's so important because I looked at every single duck collector as either a current or potential resource for information or help. And they looked at me the same way. I started these duck collecting conventions. <laughs> And I found over time that my duck friends became my teachers, and my teachers in the community also became my friends. And when you have this kind of support network, you become very powerful. So I learned that these you know, small little strategies were you know, all that it took to become an expert. And the mystery out of becoming a master of something really um, went away for me. And I realized that I could do it again, and I could teach others to do it. So nowadays, I spend most of my energies on my academic work, but I've never forgotten that my path to mastery was paved with rubber duckies. And I hope that your paths to mastery are just as ducky. Thank you.